One of the ways we're confronted with the changes in the place we live is when um, a shortcut is transformed into this lengthy ordeal. And the reason for this is you have no control over these circumstances. And I experienced this from time to time. And a few years just before the COVID, I had a bit of a shock because I had this route that would take me from, if I was walking back home from the east, I live in the center, if I was walking from the east of the city, then I would take this route that would cut through the red light district and very, I'd be at home in no time. Um, this is a route that was generally a daytime route and uh, during the day the red light district back then was not the madhouse it is today. So it was. Re it seemed to be quite quiet. I don't remember. I mean, you'd see people there, but I never really felt uncomfortable. You know, zipping through. You were never blocked by crowds. And so on this day, I'm sort of going home, and I go into a place called Bloodstraat, and if you didn't get it, the name means Blood Street, <laughs> which I think had to do with blood. Somebody once told me it had to do with the blood of people who were executed in. Uh, the square a little further up, but I don't know if that's if that's the truth. Anyway, it's called Blood Bloodstraat, Blood Street. I so went through there, and usually you'd go in there. I'd go down the street, turn right onto the newer sides, and zigzag my way home. So as I get towards the end, before I can really think about what's happening, I find myself sucked into this mass of people. I mean. It was like treacle people, just millions. Okay, there weren't millions, but it seemed like millions. Every, just people everywhere, everywhere. And my initial panic is like, I need to get out of here because I can't breathe. I can't do anything. I couldn't see anything. You just had heads here in front of me, everywhere, people, people. And it was really, really slow. We were all shuffling. Okay, I can't get out. I'm stuck in there. And so the only choice, the only thing I can do is surrender. I can only sort of accept that this is where I will be for now. And so my hope was I would only be squished until a certain point and then I could sort of zoom left or right. But that was not to be. I was in this for the long haul. And so the initial panic dies down. Uh, I, need, I like space. And so having no space, being so compressed like now, just it's very freaky and I learned a lot of things about myself about how you have to tell yourself you can tell yourself okay calm down be cool it's okay nothing's going to happen if something does happen somebody will help you if you faint if you this and that it, it whatever it was just really incredibly tight and had we been running or moving quickly I might not have worried too much but it was this this bizarre shuffle where you can't you could barely take a step it was it was horrifying and so i'm in this thing and slowly it's very very slowly heading towards where i need to head to that is towards home my thought begins to change somewhere i think i begin to calm down and accept okay i have no choice and i'm in that i'm in in that group and i slowly start thinking about wow can you imagine that if you are a tourist, so you've saved up your money, put a whole bunch of cash together, and you decide, I'm going to go and visit the city. And a large portion of your visit is spent shuffling around, looking at the back of other people's shoulders or heads. That's very peculiar. You know, I would demand my money back, but I don't know how you, you can do that. And... In that moment, I realized I was kind of lucky because I just had to go home. I just had to survive this. It took maybe about 45 minutes, something that normally would take not even 10 minutes, I think. But it, oh man, this was, uh, sorry, I, I remember it was just not nice. But I only, that's all. I just had the few minutes of this and that was that. Whereas other people, they have paid money and this is their experience. This is how they experience the city. This is what tourism is giving them. I thought that must be really, really, really hor horrible. Why would anybody want to do that? 
Um, I know the red light district attracts people in a way that is very... If you live here, you don't really think about it. It's there and you just go about your business. I mean, I live on a red light street and you have a completely different relationship to the ladies there. You, they're, the, they're your neighbours, so you say hello and occasionally you chat about this and that and whatever. Um, there is no spectacle, but for tourists it is this massive spectacle and I think it's quite possible that Amsterdam went a little too far in selling itself as the center of sex and weed to <laughs> the world in general, at least at that time it was that way. So you just had too many people in the red light district. It was, it was a miserable, miserable experience. I, till this day, I've crossed there once, but that was really, really late at night. I never go in that area during the day anymore. If I need to be in any of the shops bordering that zone, then I, I have different routes because I do not need that experience again. Um, there are many, I, I could, I think I could talk for hours about moments of touristic compression in your own city. Uh, what I will end on is that I have a lot of empathy for inhabitants of cities who begin to come up with tricks to encourage tourists to get lost. <laughs> I know the argument is, hey, we need tourists, but I don't know if that's really, I think that it's out of balance. You need to calm things down a little. Of course, I'm saying this and I am sometimes a tourist, so there is a bit of hypocrisy there, but still. Um, yeah, so that was, um, that compression thing was quite a lesson how my city, my city, I don't own Amsterdam, but I see myself as an Amsterdamer, having lived here for so long, how my city has slowly been taken over by these masses who don't really care very much for it and unfortunately don't actually get to see very much of it, even though they are here. Well, what can you say? Thank mm -hmm. you.